the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was out without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and he called the darkness night, and the evening and morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and morning in the s were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place, and let the ga dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And God for brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed, and the fruit yielding tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. The earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and tree yielding fruit, whose seed it was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let there be there for signs and seasons and days and years, and let there them be there for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light in, upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, greater light to rule the day and lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God s set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and the rule over the day and over the night and to divide the night light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and the fowl that fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. God created great wills, and every living creature moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, every winged fowl after his kind, God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. In the evening and morning of the fifth day, and God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, and the creeping thing, and the beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our own, in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. So God created man in his own image, an image of God created he him. Male and female created he, he them. God blessed them, and God said, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over fish of the sea, and the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And to every and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree which is in the f fruit of a yield tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and every fowl of the air, and to every cr thing that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given every green 
herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything he had made, and behold, it was good. And the evening and morning were the sixth day. Satan and God once worked together. The Most High, as he was usually called, was the leader of the mammalian races. They had long since passed the primitive state that the creatures that they put on the face of the earth were in. Both races lived in harmony, but trouble was brewing. Satan, the leader of the reptilian races, was dissatisfied with being under the thumb of the mammalian races. The mammalian races have long since dominated the universe. And Satan didn't like that. Furthermore, there were rumblings inside the reptilian halls. And as a result, Satan's pride grew. And he hatched a plan to take over the universe. It was a, da it was a daring and bold plan. And he didn't know if it would work. But he was tired of being under the thumb of the Most High. Slowly but surely the reptilians formed their battle fleet. And waited. Who knows how long it was. For time to these beings was almost limitless. They were a Type 4 civilization. And more within a Type 4 civilization could destroy the whole universe. So agreements had to be reached on how to conduct themselves. But Satan was not good at keeping agreements. So the fleet was put together hastily and stealthily. Ships and numbers of the grains of the sands of the sea. The war was forced upon them. It was a war in heaven. And this is their story. The story of the earth, the story of the heaven, the story of God, and the story of Satan. This is our story too, as we will explain. Prepare yourself for an adventure like none other. Hello, General, I hope you have some good news for me, said Satan, staring at his general. Yes, I do. Our fleet is assembled, and we're getting ready to strike. But we're confused. We're outnumbered. Only a third of our people have actually decided to join us. The enemy will outnumber us two to one, Lord Satan. Do you think it's wise to strike at the most high's fleet when we are outnumbered so badly? Satan said, 
we have the element of surprise. Do not understand this, General. Yes, I understand that, Lord Satan. But the odds are still against us. How, do, how can we fight the Most High? He's never been defeated. We will do the best that we can. We will destroy the Most High's fleet before they ever get off the ground. Then I will ascend to the proper throne. Too long, we reptilians have been led and controlled by the mammalian species. Now, go. Go out, finish preparing the fleet. We will strike at the optimum time when the Most High does not suspect what we are doing. We will destroy their fleet. We will crush them in one swift blow and we, the reptilians, will take our place in the universe. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! So Satan called for the council to convene. He called for the reptilian commanders to get together. And he would address them at a war council, fully expecting to take the Most High by surprise. But the Most High had other ideas. Someone in the Empire had informed the Most High that Satan was planning to rebel. The reptilians, of course, did not know this. And so, Satan formulated his plans anyway. Lines were drawn for the dogs of war to commence. So Satan went out and addressed the lizard, lizard people, most of whom still live in the forest, in the fields, where they were at home. Hello, my people, Satan said. You and I are facing the greatest day of our lives. We will soon throw off the shackles. Of the Great One, the Most High, and the Mammalians. We will conquer them. I will put my throne higher than the Most High. We will defeat them. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Here is what I need you to do. Prepare our feet. Get ready, the struggle will not be easy. But we will prevail. We are reptilians. We are strong. The mammalians have put the 
yoke the servitude on us for too long. We will defeat them. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Stronger than I will soon my rightful place as the leader of the reptilian races. We will win. Just you wait and see.